This is the fifth video in the video series of Orbital Mechanics Python, and this one I'm going to cover the tool.py file and the plot and orbits function. So in the last video, I said that I would do the Keplerian um, orbital elements and the plot and orbits function, but I tried to do it a few times and it was just getting way too long, so I decided to split it up. Um, so the tools.py is going to be another file in the Python tools uh, directory where you can just store a bunch of miscellaneous functions. And the first one is going to be the plot and orbits function, which I'll just get straight into. And I'll explain it more when I actually get into the into the writing software. So the plot and orbits function is when you have kind of just an arbitrary amount of orbits and you want to plot them all together. Um, so far in the orbit propagator class, you have only plotted uh, one orbit. So this one, uh, you can see in the background image there, there's two orbits there. So um, you can plot as many orbits as you want. That's why I call it n orbits, not just an arbitrary amount of orbits. Um, it's very useful uh, for certain things, um, especially when you want to compare different orbital elements, which I'll cover in the next video. I said I would do it in this video, but I said I split it up. So in the next video, I'll, call, I'll cover orbital elements where um, you, it's very clear to see the different orbital elements. And it's kind of a good way to intuitively um, get your head around what these orbital elements mean. Um, so I'll just get straight to it. And then the one thing that I wanted to initially state is um, in the last video, so I put all these lines right here um, in the propagate orbit method. But actually what I want to do and what I have in my actual scripts um, is to put it in the init function because you already have all the parameters that you need in order to be able to do all these calculations in this group and to be able to um, initialize these arrays that you want the season wise. Um, so there's no need to have it in another function. You just have it there, which I wanted to add right at the beginning. And then for the tools, tools.py. Um, so this function is in the same directory or this file is the same directory as the over propagator class. Um, you just algo Python tools right here. Um, so whenever you add, you know, this path, or whatever path that you have into uh, your Python script, uh, everything's going to be there. So that's why it's called Python tools. You have all your Python tools in one place. Um, so in order to find the plot and orbits function, I'm actually going to copy and paste plot 3D because a lot of it is the same. There's just some very minor and subtle kind of changes you have to make. Uh, shift tab, instead of plot 3D, plot and orbits and no self and then so instead of self because you're passing in all these arguments it's going to be self or it's going to be ours and labels i'll explain why that's the case i can't spell um test title for arbitrary reasons just many orbits because why not um okay so what you have uh what you had previously is you have your shelf dot r's and you're going to plot them but in this case you're going to plot however many uh, position arrays there are in this r's um, variable. So what you're going to do is it's going to be a four, it's going to be four, four R and R's, and then you're going to plot this. And it's saying self dot R's is just going to be R. Like that. Lots of erasing selfs here. Not the most exciting thing in the world. But we're yeah we're not going to need this anymore because uh, we're going to have a bunch of colors. So we don't just want to define one color. We're going to define a bunch of colors. Um, so we'll leave that as that. And then once again, so the first one up there is plotting. The first one is plotting the whole trajectory, and then this one is just plotting the initial state. Um, just because I find it useful and I kind of like it. It's not necessary, but it'll be use. I think it'll be more useful when you get into the. In the next video, um, where it's going to be the classical orbital elements, you can really compare them. You can see how they differ, especially in their initial state. And then we're not going to need this label because it doesn't actually make that much sense. So instead of trajectory, actually, what we're going to do here, we're going to say n equals zero is just a counter, and then label equals labels n, and then you increment n. Um, you do this because you want to know which orbit you're looking at. So I'll show it in the main function um, where I actually plug it in. But um, yeah, you just want to be able to distinct which one is which. And stuff of self.cd, it's just cd. 
just a lot of taking out cells here. That's all good. Cells that's to be radius is just radius. Next, uh, show plot, save plot is going to be the same. So that should be good for now. Um, okay, and then that's done. So we're just going to make a few instances of an initial state. So it's going to be rmag equals, let's just say, um, pd.earth radius say plus 400 um because in the next video i'm going to do an iss example uh international space station so it's around 400 uh kilometers r mag equals mp dot square root oh actually one thing that i found recently is when you want to take the square root or uh sine or cosine or inverse sine or inverse cosine um it's actually more worth your time for math info square root. Um, to use a math, uh, this is a built-in library in Python because NumPy, it checks, um, it has a check for to see if you're using an array or just a scalar, just any old value. Um, so it's actually gonna speed it up a lot. And in this, in this program, it makes like probably no difference just because we're doing two things, but um, in general, it can make a huge difference if you have like a big file we have a lot of square roots you got to take or a lot of sines or cosines you got to take. It's actually, it'll speed it up tremendously. Um, so just for good habit, I'm going to use it here, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, so we're going to do p dot earth. And again, this is the equation for a circular orbit. U over R. So we'll have R mag just equal, um, yeah, 400. And then just to make another example, just so we can have a few, I'll make zero. Actually, I'm just gonna have one just, just have some examples. Actually, not yet. Because I need R0 to be a zero value. R mag. Um, being a rain will just be passed in. I can't type. V0. Such as a circular orbit around 400 kilometers. And I'm just going to copy and paste and make another one. That's a little bit more exciting. 400, let's just make it 1000 because why not? Mm -hmm. Vmag times, say like 1.3 or something. And then Rmag, Vmag, let's just make it like 0.1. I'm just trying to spice it up here. Uh, 0.1, let's make it 0.3. Um, or we differentiate these, just, I'll just add another zero. And then, so what you do, like I did in the previous video, is like OP0 equals OP, that's already R0, V0, uh, is it T span to T, I think? Yeah, T span to G. And then we're gonna make our, our second over propagator class, which would be R00, V00, T span, and VT. The second set, um, OP0 dot propagate orbit. We're gonna propagate orbit on both. Get all those values. And then we're gonna use a new function, T dot, because we're importing the tool to T, and it's in the same directory as that Python tools folder, so we can just import it straight through. Uh, t dot plot and orbits where the orbits are going to be op0 dot r's op0 dot r's so those, these are the um, um, position arrays that we're going to pass in and then the labels are going to be you don't have to explicitly say labels but I like to do it just for clarity's sake uh, let's just say 0 and 1 because I'm not feeling fancy today uh, 0 and 1 just so you can distinguish them and then show plot we got to be able to show the plot if it's true And let's see how many errors there are. Our propagator has no attribute R0 for claw. Okay, it's just because I tried to make this video a few times and I decided to do another thing. So L dot R self dot R0 equals R0. I'm just gonna make another one. You don't really have to worry about this. Self dot R0 equals R0. I'm gonna make that change in the next video. So for now you don't have to worry about it. Self dot V0 equals V0. 
and then let's see what other errors come up because of that. Has an attribute y0, y0. Oh, yeah. So self.y0 equals self.r0 dot to list plus self.v0 dot to list. This is basically just saying because I have this y's, um, I have this initial state, um, and then I, I just want to make it a list that has the r and v together. So that's how you do it in a Python list. Unknown object 3D, probably because I did not import a proper, shoot. I need to import that one thing that I talked about from mpl.toolkits, from mpl.toolkits, dot mplot3d, import axes, D. That's an essential. Oh, actually, I don't need it here. I'll keep it here, but here is going to be necessary. CB is not defined, obviously. Tools by line twenty-five. Oh yes, because I actually yeah, I totally forgot to do that. Okay, so CB equals um, PV dot Earth. Because most of the times we're going to be in Earth, so I'm just going to define it as that. So if you don't pass it in, we're going to assume it's Earth. Self is not defined because I totally forgot to do that. Self to ours. Isn't it fun debugging? Oh, there we go. Oh, I think the first initial condition has some problems. Oh, yeah. So you can see how these are all jaggedy and crooked. That means the time step's way too big. So we'll just decrease that. Thousand, make it a hundred, because why not? So it's actually a pretty good example of time steps and uh, such things. Um, it's actually still jaggedy, because these are pretty, so when you get um, closer to the earth, um, your velocity increases, that's just order mechanics. So um, it's probably gonna get more jaggedy just be based on the time steps. So we can actually, I'll just make this more real quick just so it looks more smooth. Even though 100 is already pretty small. So we'll do 10, but that's, that's very small. Whatever. So you can see that we're plotting different orbits here. Um, look pretty smooth. One is pretty circular as I defined as just 400 uh, kilometers above the earth. Um, that's a, This is about actually what the International Space Station does, just as a fun fact. Um, you can see it's labeled zero here. Um, and the other one I just made super elliptical because why not? Um, you just, you can see the differences. You can see how you can get an arbitrary amount of them. You can just all put them on one list, pass them in, and it'll be all good to go. Um, yeah, this is about pretty much the example that I wanted to give, how many orbits you can make it whatever you want. So that should be good to go for this one. And then for the next video, I'm going to introduce the Kepler orbital elements, which if you don't know what that is, is basically the six values that you can have where one's eccentricity, how circular it is. Um, one is semi-major axis, basically how large the orbit is. Um, I'll explain that in the next video. And there's four other angles. And you can use this and you can describe any two body orbit without perturbations. Um, Yep, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any comments. Again, anything too slow, too fast, anything I should explain more. Um, yeah, just let me know. And thank you for watching.